Hello, I'm Ian Stafford and here I am once again with Lewis Moody, the former England captain and winner of 71 international caps and we're here to preview week four of the RBS Six Nations. It's been pretty good so far, Lewis, after a week's break. Um, uh, the weekend starts early, Friday night, under the lights in Cardiff, Wales against Ireland, on paper, an absolute cracker and it's a game that really neither team can afford to lose. Very exciting game indeed and <coughs> you just spoke about me being a retired player, it was actually five years ago today that I did retire. Congratulations. Thank you very much, I don't know whether that's congratulations or not, it's gone bloody quickly. But um, the rugby this weekend, it's been an epic tournament today um, and there are two games that are particularly exciting, you've mentioned the first one, Wales v Ireland. Um, again, you know, my old position, the back row area is going to be so prominent for both teams. Wales and Ireland both have wonderful players in there. You know, will his lip dominate from uh, from eight? How will uh, how will the Welsh back row? Will Tipperick? Will Warburton? Will they function as well as they have done when they when they all but dominated England and ended up on the wrong side of that that result? Not from an Englishman's point of view, of course. Um, so a really really exciting encounter uh, and one to look forward to. Wales will be disappointed um, in their campaign so far. If they were to lose this game, they've got France away. No, they could end up fifth in the Six Nations, which is almost almost unheard of. So, you know, they're going to be really, really pumped up, especially after such a disappointing second half against Scotland. Well, we called we called the Scotland result, didn't we? You know, we said <laughs> we did. Yeah, yeah. I don't like to I don't like to talk it up too much here. Yeah. You know, I don't know who's more surprised, you or me. <laughs> we were impressive. Um, yeah, Scotland have been a, a wonderful entity in their own right, but Wales are definitely on that downward curve. You sensed, I certainly sensed in that England defeat that, you know, their heads had bowed, you know, the manner in which they played that game, which had been, you know, for 60 minutes or 78 minutes or whatever, you know, very good performance. But losing to England in that manner at home was always going to take them over the edge and, and it's continued to go that way. But they, they lost to a very good Scotland side. You know, now it's up to Adam and Jones to sort of put his troops in, galvanise them. At least it's at home. Um, you know, I think from my point of view, Wales have a huge amount to play for, but I think Ireland are going to sense that they can still go. If they win this game, they'll go home and they'll fancy beating England um, at home which England hopefully will be playing for a Grand Slam, Ireland will be playing for a Six Nations title, it'll make that game incredibly exciting. Um, it's just whether Wales can put up enough of a, a resistance to, to make any sort of game of it against Ireland and then stop them, stop them sneaking it. The neutral will probably want the, an Irish win for that very fact that it sets up the Grand Finale uh, a weekend after next. Um, Ireland's defeat in Edinburgh suddenly isn't looking quite so bad, is it? Well, bear in mind what Scotland have done in these Six Nations. And since then, I mean, they've put 60 past Italy, in Italy, and um, Which they... of course England, you know, couldn't do absolutely. at home against yeah. Italy. And, and they did, a, they did a, a professional job on the French, and also with Sexton back now, mm. uh, Conor Murray, uh, Johnny Sexton, that, that one, that's potential Lions halfback combination. And they'll play a big part on Friday night, won't they? Yeah, they'll play a huge part. You know, Sexton, for me, coming back into that Irish team is, is pivotal to, to them going forward in these next two games. Um, you know, Conor Murray's been a, a wonderful player for the last couple of years and is just continuing to improve. Standout nine for the Lions at the moment? Oh, standout nine, crikey. Um, you know, Laidlaw sadly got injured at, at the weekend, uh, last weekend, didn't he? So, you know, he was playing some good rugby. He was operating well with Finn Russell, you know, putting Scotland on the front foot. And who could argue that, you know, there's not going to be many more Scottish players in the Lions side this year, in the Lions squad, than there, than there otherwise normally would be. Um, but you'd probably say that, that Murray was up there um, as the number one choice at the minute. I think Ben Youngs would probably be second choice. Um, Danny Kerr would probably be devastated that Italy employed the tactics they did in his one starting match. So Murray Sexton, possibly the, the Lions halfback combination. Um, it's it's going to be tight, it's going to be, I mean the Welsh should be really up for this, won't they? Um, give us a prediction. I, I feel Ireland are going to be too strong. Um, they've got too much to play for. Wales really now playing for pride. 
uh, and trying to salvage something out of this season. And there, of course, are going to be a number of guys on that Welsh side who are desperately going to push their claim. And these last two matches are going to be their opportunity to push that claim for a Lions spot. Um, I see Ireland by 10. And finally, you mentioned Anna Wynne Jones. It, it never helps if you're captaining a losing side, but there's still a feeling that Alan Wynne is, is um, a, a strong contender to be uh, the Lions captain. Do you feel as if a, another defeat against the Irish would, would, would play against that? Um, no, I, I don't think so. You know, I, I know I met Alan, you know, you hear great things about him as, as a leader and as a player, and, and many thought he should maybe have been captain. Um, prior to this, um, I think if he's the right person for the job, then then he will get it. You know.